um, the fake sun in China. Well, they have a fake moon, which is basically like two fission reactors they're holding up with <coughs> duct tape and balloons, basically. And they, <coughs> they need to do it because their atmosphere above is fried. Like, it, it's a... It's just horrible. So they don't really see the sun. Like it was so bad, <clears throat> they used to paint giant like billboards of like the sun in the sky with mountains and stuff because it's so polluted, it's so thin. So people wouldn't um, just keep killing each other. So they need to find another way to produce energy that they can harness to, to to add to whatever natural resources they're trying to get. So if you think about the irony of them creating something artificial to pull something natural from it shows you the level of insanity that these mad scientists are dealing with at this point in time. So much like the stories you hear about ancient Atlantis falling because they was practicing, you know, illegal experiments or like Superman and Krypton, you know, we're at the precipice of that type of situation where we move into the mad scientists or supervillain era where you have people, billionaires who are also spacemen, you know what I mean, who can tell you they go into space, but they really just in a penis shaped rocket that's only going to the, the lower upper atmosphere. So he's created a, a steady rise to the low bottom. He's not even at the middle. Yet, if he say it's space because he's got all these O's after his name, it's space. You see what I'm saying? While at the same time, you have Elon Musk, who what they're not telling you is not in a low key. It's like a skirmish. He's he's in a skirmish with like five different governments right now because his satellites, the Starlink satellite, is so penetrable yet mobile. They sink in a low atmosphere, low level orbit. So that's why the signals are so good. But because of their trajectory movements, they'll literally crash into whatever else is in their way. So you have like the Russian space station have to veer out the way. You have the Chinese move their space station twice because these things be crashing into the thing. Also, unlike their satellites, his satellite is biodegradable. So if the thing crash or fall, when it burns up into the atmosphere, that's it. You understand? Because of the materials that he used to build it. So he, so even though he has more launches, right, he's actually producing less waste. So you know they don't like that. Because now he's making the climate change shit. They talk about look crazy. Because he's doing twice the work with less the imprint. You see what I mean? So in the story, think about, think of him as Tony. And think of Starlink as Ultron. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's his position in the world right now. And all of the governments are really not doing it, except Russia. Russia, they don't really care for whatever reason. You can look all of this up on the internet. This is what's been going on. This is why they refer to him as a dilettante. For those people that don't know what a dilettante is, that's like somebody that, like, Somebody like me, somebody that studies mad stuff, but hasn't necessarily been accredited in all of it, but is usually a writer by most of it. It's basically that. Dilettantes are looked at with scorn by hardcore academia because hardcore academia is toting the company line. So if you think about mind control, you think about it from the old school reset time. So you got to think about it that everything after 1900 is the new, is like the new Star Wars. Like, you remember the Star Wars you like? Well, the fake Star Wars you didn't like, that's the that's the 1900 on era, right? And then what happened was we made it dope again. We still found a way to, to 
to innovate amidst all of this reconstruction, this crazy stuff that they was doing. So in the midst of this time, this time in history, you can look this up. It's, I've been talking about it for years, but whatever. It's called, they're now calling it, okay? They're now calling it the Phantom Century. I called it the Void Century. But this is the time of what I'm saying about how they was able to flip the time barrier on us and put us back into some sort of thing that we're in right now. So Elon Musk, right, which may not even be a real person. That's what you got to understand, too. Like, this may not even be a, a real individual. This is the guy that they show you that that act like he built it from the bootstraps when he really used the million dollars he got from his pops who owned a diamond mine in South Africa, i.e. apartheid, to, to pop off his millions. Just like um, little, little um, Mark Greenberg, who is a Rockefeller on the other side, took the his mother name or whatever, and then took the Zuckerberg so he wouldn't trace all that together and then was able to use that little bundle trust money to set up the social network. You know what I'm saying? Facebook. Just like Jake Bezos. We supposed to believe that he was in his basement and he was, you know, all those pictures of him with the papers all around him and the books stacked and all that. He punked over the little console. Just just like that. Just like Bill Gates with the with the Microsoft thing. Like all of these are characters. These are historical characters that are used to fill this space that that they need to exist. But if this was back in the days, if we was like in, again, the first reset period, this nigga, Gates would have been Carnegie. This nigga, um, Bezos would have been Edison. You see what I'm saying? It's just whoever's in the, in the position now. We're just going to use them and they're going to be this. And this is how we're going to move the story. So all of that is said to say that the academia is what allows the system to flourish because post the real time period, bless you, post the real time period, we were in a period, bless you, of, of uh, resurgence, renaissance, expanding the world consciousness as opposed to retracting. You know what I'm saying? So we were dealing and uh, potentially dealing with the realest aspects of life because we were also dealing with the transitional period in which one kingdom was now being transferred to another. However, the people who founded the original kingdom were still provided certain circumstances that would allow them to maintain the trajectory that humanity was put on by these people. Who were those people? Our ancestors. Who were they? The Moors, the ancient who descend from who? The ancient Moroccans, i.e. the ancient Mauritanians. Who were they? They were and are the original people that descended from the time before all of what we perceive time existed. And knew and understood that the world that they lived in was a comp was comprised of a vast realm that was circumnavigated by them to know that there were other realms on the outside of that. And somehow they were able to take control of those enough to be able to, again, not only circumnavigate, but take control of those areas as well. And at certain periods in time, knowing that you're knowing the realm that they existed in, were able <clears throat> to go to these different realms based upon the openings that they had charted and realized would exist <clears throat> and open uh, due to their understanding of the realm, i.e. the sphere or the, the whatever you want to call it, right? So, for instance, I'll show you. So when you go and they go back, remember I showed you the article about the Asiatic man that existed from time immemorial here in America that they dated his DNA in the patrilineal sense going back 385,000 years, which then means, you know, the devil, you got to add another 385,000 to that 
because you're going to undercut your numbers always. Like they still got us believing that we only make up 13% of the nation. So every other people in the country is raising, but we're always at a steady 13% ever since what, 1961? And that's supposed to be normal. But anyway, uh, when you look at what they perceive as that, they did a uh, restructuring period where they started to tell the truth somewhere around the end of the uh, old uh, Barry administration. And he put out that the oldest joint they found in Morocco goes all the way back to, again, ancient Phoenicia and all of that. And they made a reconstruction of his image or face. A lot of people said that he looked like 50 Cent, right? Which is funny. But this is what a so-called North African or the original ancestors of all the people who call themselves North Africans or Northern Africans today were said to have looked like. But then when you look at it from this perspective, right, of the giant period, you see this thing right here. Of course, they're not going to make them look dark, but you see what I'm saying. You see it here, it says giant of Mauritania. See this, right? Giant of the Swiss, Goliath. So when you think of Goliath and David and Goliath, he was big. But the Swiss giants compared to the Mauritanian giants and then the Mauritanian giants going into now the real big ones and then the ones that was bigger than this that actually became the land and stuff like that. Now you're getting into a heavy uh, macrocosm. So in that, these ancient Mauritanians. So in that, the ancient Mauritanians, being that they were the ones that was on here, when you read the Emerald Tablets and stuff like that, you don't read about certain things. Like when you read the Bible about the people that they say are the Hebrews that did this, this, and that, there's no mention of things like the Sphinx or the pyramids or anything that what came to be known in the Hebrew story. You understand? So in the Hebrew story, it says that they were used to build the pyramids. However, there's no the book that they get the story from is the Bible. But when you read the actual so-called Bible, there's no evidence of pyramids, one being in it, <laughs> number one. And then number two, there's no evidence that these pyramids was actually built by the people they say built them. So then we have what? We have a point where we have to make the history make sense in order to maintain the new system that we're implementing. You understand? You understand? So systems of education have to be created to justify the existence of this reality that we are made to believe is real. And thus, that must be taken from the real sciences that existed at the time, right, brought by the high culture that was doing it big at the time, who was us. So in order for them to turn it into the stuff they needed to be today, the manure that we call education today, they had to reduce the essence of the type of education we were dealing with at the time of the fall. Okay, everybody got that. So when's the time of the fall? According to them, all right, on January 2nd, 1492, King Boabdil, right, surrendered Granada to the Spanish forces. And in 1502, the Spanish crown ordered all Muslims forcibly converted to Christianity. The next century, saw a number of persecutions, and in 1609, the last Moors, still adhering to Islam, were expelled from Spain. Now, if we take the one from in front, all of the numbers, then that means in 492, this happened, right? Because we know that the thousand-year Reich was added at the end of the World War II. 
after everything was destroyed. And so from 492 to 502 to 609, right? Those that were still were now expelled from Spain. But if you look at this, Spain, remember, did not exist in 502. Spain did not exist, well, excuse me, Spain did not exist in 492. So these Spanish forces that they're talking about, right, had to be something else. These Spanish forces are what we refer to as the old Roman forces, okay? And because of that, one of the things that were left behind or one of the agreements in actually was a sale between the King Esagal, which coincidentally is the planet in Star Wars that the Emperor escaped to, which is crazy. Anyway, Esagal, who was the uncle of Boabdil, uh, is the one who made the deal with Elizabeth under a treaty or a sale document, bill of lading or, or receipt document called the Te Deum. And that came due in 1491. And so in that, I'm not going to go through all of the, the tenets of the treaty, but it basically says more shall not give or pay to the highness more tribute that day than accustomed to paying to the Moorish king. Because remember, this is now all over the world. This is not just Spain, Moorish Spain or, or what they call the Moorish Empire. Remember, you find the architecture of them all over the world. And I just showed you that a lot of these Moors was giants. Right? We just saw that. Right? Because they descend again from that ancient thing that they could actually trace. But there were certain tenants where all of the tenants in the surrender of Granada, like we as Moors, we all should have a treaty of the surrender of Granada. You know what I mean? Because these are the things that are still held accountable today because the Pope was the one that signed off on all of this. Because it actually wasn't a surrender. It was basically a, a dispossession for a certain amount of time. You know what I mean? No more shall be forced to become Christian against his will. See, that's in direct contravention of what was supposed to happen in 1502. See? So what this again shows is that you're not supposed to give an inch to these people because the minute you do, they take advantage. The more shall not be compelled or forced into any kind of military service against their will. Now think about the whole Muhammad Ali instance. And him actually choosing the name Muhammad Ali and what that translated to in actual Muslim customary law, which was the Republican form of law, which is translated in the Republican form of law, they were trying to hold him under. See why, they, why he couldn't go to jail? Why he couldn't be compelled to do it? Because he got that science from who? Who named him? Elijah Muhammad. And Elijah Muhammad at that time was the only more, right, who was in the nation of Islam because he got his understanding under the prophet Nobu Juali when he was Elijah Paul Bay. Therefore, he had a direct line from the prophet to take that name Ali, right, to then represent both the nation of Islam and the so-called Moors, which is why you see Muhammad Ali in Moroccan, Bernus and, and Fez and all of that. Islam, right? So this shows you, again, when you reach a certain level they, and you take your true name, they got to give you a certain degree. And then after he took the name Muhammad Ali, that's when everything started switching. The mob left him alone. The United States had to leave him alone, right? But again, he's still a man and he still fell victim to his lower self being that he was still a celebrity. See, I mean, Hollywood, the women and all of that, see? So, again, all of this tying into the same understanding that everything that we're dealing with now is based on our forced amnesia or, or uh, uh, how do you say, a willful amnesia on what it takes to really ascend and take this stuff back. So the science that they then 
alternate to get what they want came out of the original science that was governing the world at that time. At that time, let's say the Latin aspect of us understanding our law was in the form of what you would call ontology, right? Because ontology, this is when you say onto or unto the end of time, right? Ontology deals with the actual science of being, what it takes to actually exist and what it takes to exist as a being in a reality. See what I'm saying? Because reality is the aspect of life that can only be experienced, right, through existence. Yet one can exist without being. You see? So this is the birth of what our, our ancient ancestors as sages and stuff in the, in the ancient classical periods were referred to as the predominant paradox, right? After that, we have the science of pneumatology. Right, which is really the science of the breath or the logos. How, when Allah said, "Light, let there be light," when it actually was uttered outwardly, how that utterance activated something within that dark to manifest what is we refer to as the logos. This is now going from ontology, right, being in existence, now into how that existence trans translates or transliterates into physical life or the existence of life in a reality, reality being another name for universe, right? Then under that, we have anthroposophy, right? Which is where we get now the history and the aspect of man Opus from the Anir, from the so-called Greek, right? But opus meaning I, or like Oculus. Sophia meaning wisdom, but also Egypt. Sophia is another name for the place they call Egypt. From there, psychology, which is the study of the psyche. Psyche coming from the Latin or the ancient goddess of the mind. At that time, though, certain philosophers like Virgil or um, more Virgil, Virgil or like or even Aurelius looked at it that the soul and the psyche was the same thing. But people like Socrates and these other ones was more about the separation and that the soul was subordinate to the mind. And then by the time you get to people like uh, Hoyle, right? That he did basically saying that it's all, it's all, it doesn't, or Nietzsche, none of it exists. It's not even real. There is no mind. There is no God. You know what I'm saying? Because, well, there's only a mind because the mind created God. So therefore, God is subordinate to the mind. Well, that type of bullshit. Right. So all of that is um, then reflected then in theodicy, right? Theo meaning God, right? Also language. Also, meaning dyke, like we know dyke <laughs> as a slang meaning, but it also has a meaning of um, being able to hold water, right? But dyke also means judgment. Um, well, I'll get into that. Where do the souls go? 
uh, when they transition. That's where you get into the cosmology. We get into the cosmos, which is basically means to order, arrange, dispose, right? That's why um, when you watch alien movies, the aliens are always coming from the stars, like coming to dispose, like coming to destroy, because the idea of the cosmos really is the applicable unknown. So in writing, for instance, there are certain tropes that are used to to garner the mind along the idea of the story. But every trope used is an idea or a symbol of something else. So the monster in the movie is always the aspect of the self that's not being dealt with. You know what I'm saying? The killer chasing the person is 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 the problems and the, the things that the person hasn't faced. You you dig what I mean? That's what the killer really is. Because the because we've seen in the movie that the person that's being chased and killed, there's a choice they could have made not to be choice chased and killed, but they chose the opposite, right? So this killer now represents their rotten choices. See what I'm saying? Like so like movies we think is one thing means is about something totally different. Like Top Gun was not about planes and all of that. That was really about whether or not Tom Cruise, the character, Maverick, was going to be gay or not. Why? Because it wasn't until his girlfriend started dressing like Goose that he started to have the physical relationship with her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the whole thing was about them, you know, grab assing and doing the things that those guys do with each other. And his ultimate choice to choose the female that was, once she chose to become more dominant like the males. Because up until then she was in the skirts, the dresses, the shirts. Look at the movie, go go back and look at the movie from this perspective and you see what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm saying, like the princess and the frog, the princess, she was a great character. Like she, she was the only Disney princess to have a job. She had like a job. She was a princess, and she had like a a bit. Of, no, she had a business, and she uh was an entrepreneur, and she had her own um understanding of culture, and she was a princess trying to put the people on. So what did they do? They turned her into a frog for the whole movie. Why a frog? Because the frog deal in the swamp. What's in the swamp? That's where we hide all of the ancient artifacts and all of the stuff that we did from the old technology, from the old society. See what I'm saying? Excuse me. So these sciences, what I'm saying here, are the are the ancient, or let's say the precept sciences of all of the basic stuff that we're dealing with today. But from the Moorish perspective, right? This is how it's interpreted through us or how we interpreted it. You did? So where people saw us practicing a religion, so like the average normie would see us like praying to the East and they would think, oh, they doing some sort of ritual religion thing. But what we're doing is we're ordinating ourselves to the central location of the magnetic force, right? The same force you see they talking about in Star Wars. Understand? Like all of us right now should be sleeping towards the east. Like get a compass and a C in your crib if you're sleeping. If you're sleeping in a northern section, that's not good because the northern pole is magnetic. So all of the iron that you built up over the days, the years, the months is being sucked up out of you into that northern energy. What you need is the eastern portion because now that's the giving energy. That's not all everything from the south giving us the magnetic energy that's being taken. That's why we used to walk barefoot and all that. But the white man made it like that we was stupid. Like we we was thinking all of that. You know what I mean? Because he poisoned the ground where you couldn't do it. See what I'm saying? So these sciences, these ancient sciences were, again, couldn't be totally destroyed because how are they going to run the new reset time period? So in the 385,000 years that your ancestors existed, right, they used symbols 
to represent themselves and certain energies that they had traditional power of. And when those cultures used those symbols, they tied themselves back to the ancient source by which this magnetic force would come from. That's why you find the same architecture or same stylish type of architecture or writing or whatever in all of these different cultures. Because at one time, they were all the same culture. It's like the five boroughs in New York. They all are in New York, but they all got their own customs and cultures, right? And so because of that, you were able to then do trading and all the other type of stuff or whatever. And this is how the cultures transcended into other cultures. So you say, at what point do, do these cultures end? Well, the more technologically advanced the society gets, the more spiritually decadent it becomes. Whereas the more spiritual and enlightened and high the society gets, the less technological and advanced it usually becomes. There's rarely been a society where both have been stimulated. And those that have existed in such a way are so mythic that we can't even actively prove that they existed. Yet the idea of them persists, which then means what? They were real. In the genetic code enough to be passed down from the different cultures and generations that adopted the symbols that would act as genetic and spiritual oculus markers that would allow you to tap into all of this stuff. So where somebody sees all of these as different culture symbols, I see these as the same symbol left by the same original people that was there. Just we, the Phoenician, the Canaanite wound up moving to from Brooklyn to Queens and then set up the Phoenicians and then they got too hot for them there and then they went and set up the Hebrews. You see what I'm saying? And then they went from there and then set up the Aramaics, the Hindus, so forth and so on. But they're the same people. But after so many generations, they even forget that. Yeah, you sleep with your head face in the east. So as you see, these are all the same thing. So because they're the same thing, they have the same, what they call paragenesis. Therefore, they follow along the thing. But in none of these cultures did we read about things like they talk to us about in modern history class. So like right now, there's an actor Called, I bring it to I bring it to entertainment as well because it makes it easier to grasp I think the conceptual idea in comparison to just a bunch of just pictures and jargon. So there's an actor named Chris Pratt who plays Star Lord, who the people who are trying to destroy modern culture really hate, and they hate him because he's not a homosexual and he is about family and he happens to be a Republican. But he don't post his views, nothing. So because of that, and they don't ever bait him into anything, they really hate him, right? So I saw some comment that somebody made about him. And it was crazy because when you look at that type of virulent control over somebody that's playing a fictional, fictional characters, you see? This shows you how invested people are into the reality or things being real when they really aren't. So I bring that up to say what I was saying about so-called Egypt. We know as more that ancient Egypt and all of that stuff really represented wherever the so-called Camites or people referred to as Camites existed at. Right. We also know that the term Egypt represented can be translated from one of the stones that says land of the blacks. Right. The thing is, you don't know if an Egyptian in that instance put that inscription up. Maybe that was somebody like that, because like that, the ancient Egyptians looked at anybody that was considered Asiatic, meaning not from Egypt, as being a barbarian. So this idea of the barbarian not having the, 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 
aquiline features of a certain cu culture, right, or, or custom married people started with us, right, the whole Hyksos thing. Like when I was in school, they was telling me that the Hyksos was some sort of white Right, which I struggle to to exist in or uh, understand how that could be when there were no white people in Africa at that time, or at least that's how the the stuff was put to me, right, in terms of historical understanding. So, in accepting that flaw in the story, I figured that something else was going on. So, in doing more knowledge to it. I started to understand that, well, if I started to look at things from a different perspective. So like if the oldest pyramid over there is the Saqqara pyramid, let's say, right? And that was built by Zosa, excuse me, built by Amhotep in the relationship to Zosa, right? And that's the only one over there. But over here now, the step pyramid was the basis of all the pyramids. And the older pyramids over here are all step. And the younger ones over there are the ones in pyramidian shape. That would then mean that somebody who was hip to the, the step stuff over here brought it to them over there. But when we say over here and over there, that's still a nominal understanding if we take into a context that the whole thing was still connected. And so how we see the Atlantic Ocean, our ancestors look more like look it looked more to our ancestors like a river because our ancestors a lot of them were some of them were gigantic and some of them were very small but all of them were the rulers of that epoch of time from that time immemorial like the people before them so when we talk about hercules and achilles or hercules or excuse me achilles right Y'all saw Troy, right? Y'all saw Troy with Brad Pitt and Eric Banner, right? And um, he was upset at what happened to him. And so he fought against um, Memnon and Memnon's army, all because Hector's little brother was pee whipped for Helen. And was willing to upset the deal that everybody made to keep the peace. And so Achilles, in response, winds up killing Hector, but Hector, but he was cursed for killing Hector because Hector was the good dude. Hector was the one protecting the kingdom, just like Achilles was, but Achilles, again, was had a big head. So this represents, again, Tony, <laughs> right? See what I'm saying? The same story. Tony right? Wants to protect the world. So what does he do? He creates Ultron, right? But he don't tell nobody he doing it <laughs> to the point that the Hulk, the Hulk had to tell him, yo, son, you can't be doing this. You got to at least tell him. And what did Tony say? Uh, I'm not with the committee. Why? Because Tony's rich, right? Tony's talented and he's about his agenda, right? Who that sound like? Now take that to real life. That's Elon Musk, right? And Starlink, which is literally like causing low key <laughs> international incidences, like for real, for real, for real. Like, it's not, a I'm laughing, but it's not a joke. It's really not a joke. This Ukraine shit is tied, is tied up in that. They're about to, Russia about to invade the Ukraine. Y'all ain't heard about that though, <laughs> right? They, what you call it? Russia about to invade the Ukraine, Israel is launching low-key sorties into Iran with the United States. But the United States now got to make a choice whether or not they're going back them. But we worry about whether Joey Splat and, <laughs> and what's his name um, done shot dog and Michi Grape done, <laughs> Michi Grape done shot dog. Like this is where we at. Do you see? Do you see why we can't? We our people not ready to run nothing yet. Yeah, China about to invade Taiwan. Where's what's the operational plan for that? <laughs> what are we going to do if that happens? But anyway, getting back to Achilles, 
representing the, the, the pride coming before the fall, he killed the good dude and was and was thanked for it. And if you look at these rappers, they all killed by their friends. Even Gaga allegedly um, sacrificed Leia Morgana if they're not the same person. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this has been out. And a rumor and a rumor that don't die. You know what I mean? Especially with stuff like that. But anyway, but they, because Brad Pitt played the story and Eric Banner and them is in it, and they play, we're we not watching our history play out. That's what's happening right now. So again, I'm showing you, this dude right here with the spear, this is Achilles. This is Hector. After the fight that you saw in the movie, in real life. This is Memnon. This is the guy that is on succession now as the father, but he played Memnon with the braids. <laughs> and <laughs> they gave him the braids in the movie. But yeah, he played Memnon in the movie. And what was the summit of the movie? They brought the Trojan horse in, the Greeks thinking they won, accepted the gift, and look what happened. Thus the expression, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Thus the reason why Greeks weren't even considered white until after World War II. Really, until Greeks was founded, which I think was in like 71, bro. <laughs> really. Really. So what I'm saying is the perceived Greek culture that they've given us don't exist. That's not real. Okay? It's fake. Just like most of the Egyptian culture that they give us is fake. Here's another Greek. This is Socrates. Okay? But these Greeks at the time would have referred to themselves by whatever nation state that they represented. The same way today, if I met a person from the continent and I said, hey, well, where are you from? They would say, oh, I'm from Burkina Faso or Ghana or Senegal. So here's the real uh, so-called Greek, which is really Peloponnesian, i.e. Macedonian, Ionian, Dorian, Corinthian. What else was over there? Etruscan. Which is the precursor, to, which is the intermediate period of Carthage. And then on your right here is the fake Egypt that they built that we think is Egypt today. The real Egypt is the stuff under the sand. The fake Egypt is the stuff that they put above the sand and reallocated it. Because remember, all that Egyptian, like one of these Egyptian columns, me and the Queen used to go to and see all the time in Central Park. It's still there, right behind the the museum where they would do the rituals at. We caught them one night doing that stuff. They had the candles and the procession and the whole thing. We on the outside of the window cursing them and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, for real. So, again, they... So, you mean to tell me you can take a rock that existed before a crane before cranes existed and cut the face off, cut the face off without cracking the ancient rock and then move it to a whole nother side of the place. This ain't just like moving the what you call, the uh, obelisk that they moved all over the place. Look, they even got the, the hook in it to make it easier for it to set in the stone. Like they look like it's built better then the people put it up. <laughs> Look, they put the cracks in it and everything. <laughs> Real talk. There's a replica of the same one right now in Shenzhen, um, China. Right now. <laughs> the same way like this. Because the reset history was all fake. In my book, The Dark Scope for 18, I wrote... Um, his dialogue where the characters were talking about time travel, and he joked and said that um, the CIA created uh, dinosaurs 
to uh, discourage people from doing time travel. And that I wrote it like that also as a disposition because um, at the time, when I was a little kid, I really wanted to be a paleontologist. And um, my mother bought me, like I would go to, she would take me to the museum. We would look at the bones and the stegosaurus and the brontosaurus and the, and the triceratops and all of that. My favorites were the stegosaurus and the, the, uh, all of that. I was really, like I was really into dinosaurs. So long story short, uh, years later, I get knowledge itself. <laughs> and, you know, I'm doing the knowledge to it, and I come across this thing called Classica Dinosauria. And in doing the knowledge to it, you came across the science or a historical anomaly that took place in the British Empire, or I would say the British Empire at the time. This was called the, if you haven't heard about it, this is, a, this is all fact now. It was called the Bone Wars, right? And the Bone Wars was a mixture of what happened after the British strung out most of China on opium and excess chicken. So there's a guy. OK, so what was the Bone Wars? OK, first I'll get to that. The Bone Wars were, uh, it was also known as the Dinosaur Rush. This was a period of immense and ruthlessly competitive fossil hunting and the discovery during the Gilded Age of American history. Remember that word, Gilded Age of American history, marked by the heated rivalry between who? Edward Drinker. Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel Charles March. Now, the Gilded Age. Somebody in class look up the term gilded. What does the word gilded mean? Well, look up the term gilded age and look at the dates they give you. Somebody in class. There's books you can get on this too. I'm about to show you. Anybody? The Gilded Age. When was that? Here we go. 1560, past participle, adjective. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, Middle English. Uh, had gilded, modern use, more dignified past. Participate of, what is that, guild? Yeah, guild alternative. It, Shakespeare lies never gilded. Okay, it's giving you. Okay, gilded era as an era of U.S. history from when? 1870 to when? 1900. So what does that tell you? Took place during the time of all of the BS, <laughs> of the upheaval of the fall of Granada. Because remember, you got to look at the fall of Granada from 492 essentially really to like 900 because we were still falling and then once it reached the 900 they put the one in front created the 1900 and then galvanized it by taking 580 years from our calendar adding 580 years to there thus creating what 580 580 that's 1160 years that they could add this then cre added with the fake calendar that they had been using, right, had added now to the time vacuum that they could add all of this fake stuff that we have now become uh, victims of to believe that it was real. Okay? So, so when you hear Gilded Age, think uh, uh, humanity coma, <laughs> like mass humanity coma. Okay, so that Gilded Age, which was ushered in, they had to create a, a past, a history, okay? And so this is where a guy named Sir Richard Owen came in. Before the guys we spoke about before, 
before then, before Cope and Marsh, before they beef, there was this devil. This devil's name is Sir Richard Cohen. Sir Richard Cohen was a part of the British Royal Society. The British Royal Society was also in charge of the antiquity section of the British East India Company that was importing documents, porcelain, all of that from ancient China, the black China that they had shut down and had put in the, far the, the foreign Chinese as the puppet governors or whatever. So they was importing that. They also was importing heavy amounts of poultry. And they were having an excess of uh, bones and stuff left over from that. So during this period, sir, uh, do, uh, this dude was really, he really didn't like Darwin. He really hated Darwin. So he needed to come up with a theory that was contrary to Darwin's, that basically said that, no, not only was the survival of the fittest, but there were the documents, the reptiles that you researching today are not even, are the descendants of these other things, right? And so this dude created a science called Classica Dinosauria. And this science of Classica Dinosauria found Sir Richard, uh, what did I say his name? Sir Richard Owens, I think his name is. It found him in the in the, the studio drawing and creating these elaborate things with skeletons but he needed material to prove the fossil so this so they got the chicken bones the excess chicken bones that was being that was left all of the chickens and stuff that was coming in from the british east india company and all of their shenanigans right because they was they were stuffing the opium in the chickens you know what I'm saying? Like, this is how deep these niggas, these British niggas was getting money. They were sticking the opium in the chickens, and then they would poison the chickens. So they couldn't even eat the chickens. So they was left with the rancid chicken meat, which they would give to the peasants, and then they was left with the bones. So you had, you had huge things with bones. Then you had all of the bones that they was importing in from all the killed buffaloes and stuff that they was uh, doing in the U.S., so they had to do something with this. So they used some of it for mulch. They tried to make some of it with bricks, but it wasn't that good. So here comes your boy, right? Sir Richard Owen. He, this nigga come in and he creates a whole science of what would have existed in terms of the dinosaur. And so he needs the fossil. So what he do is he go and get the chicken bones and start to create the fossil from the bones to create these things that you see right here. You see these things? This never existed. <laughs> Would you, you understand? Matter of fact, there's no, look, there's no dinosaur fossil found completely whole in the world. It's ne it natural. It's never, it's never happened. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm, t this is from somebody who wanted to be there. I, <laughs> I wanted to waste <laughs> I wanted to waste my life going to some dusty place digging for shit that ain't there. This is how deep I was in the game. And I was shocked reading the book, reading about this stuff. So I'm like, but wait, how did this nigga get away with this? Well, because they had to create a history for all of the stuff that they had lucked into based upon us now being dejected. So this went along with the history of of a time existing before man. You see, this is the whole thing. But what does your Circle Seven Quran tell you? What does it read? I'll read it to you. He tell you from the door. Anything else is cat, <laughs> as they say. Time never was when man was not. If life of man at a time began. A time would come when it would end. That is a cyclical loop. You understand what I'm saying? That right there, that statement right there is a closed loop. That's a circle. Because it was also written as a rhyme slash palindrome. Time never was when man was not. So what these niggas got to do is create a history in which something existed before us. So that way they can place themselves. Remember, they did not exist before a certain time. This is not fiction. This is reality. 
this right here that you're seeing is fake. Every image of a dinosaur you ever saw is fake. <laughs> it's fake. Not because I hate dinosaurs. Remember, if anybody wanted to believe in it, it was me. <laughs> you can ask my mother. She'll tell you. <laughs> no, this nigga loved a dinosaur. You heard? He had books. He had the stickers. I had the hats. I had it all, fam. So I'm telling you, it's fake. <laughs> it was all fake. So what happened was after this dude did it, the British dudes needed to, to get the rest of the world. Remember, the British is running the world. They got to remake the history. They got to take the old opulence away from you and make you think that you existed after them. So what did they do? They created a, a um, history for it in which now the dinosaurs existed, which went with the Darwin thing, which then gave them the right now to kill original people with impunity. See, Darwin gave them the ability to say survival of the fittest. So if the indigenous cultures can't adapt and, and stop us from killing them, then it's day four. See, Richard Cohen created the idea then that there was a time before man i.e. a time before God. You see? You see what I'm saying? And then created a science on it. So here come Cope and Marsh. This is a this is a, a um thing I found on the internet, which was basically like a a, a cartoon about the start of their beef. Like the Bone Wars is legendary. These niggas, I'm gonna get to this. Okay. So Cope. So look, it's a splendid creature, Colt, but there's just one thing. What's that? You put the head, you put the head on the end of its tail. <laughs> so he's saying this whole thing that he put together was backwards based on the drawings that this nigga gave him. See, Colt and Marsh took the drawings and the fake writings and the stuff that your boy did and and got a grant from the Royal Museum that was trying to put it out there that these things existed because this was the educational system based on the Russian Prussian system that was used called Kindergarten to dumb down the humans that was now under their jurisdiction. Okay, this is all part of the same inquisition, making people stupid with fake history. So the dinosaur fit right into that. So now we got to come up with a reason why the dinosaurs is no longer here. What happened? Damn, what happened? So they come up with, they can't tell you what really happened. One, they didn't exist. Two, everything that's messed up now was messed up from the great cataclysm, right? Because all of these structures in the Grand Canyon and the rest of the world was all melted, broke down. So whatever happened was so cataclysmic that them just coming into it had to do something. So what happened? So along comes this other dude who was studying Newtonian theory, another farce. Newtonian theory is another farce. All of that shit is fake because all of that was imbued by the Venetian oligarchy who would have who would have first pieces of crap but they was dark skinned. They was black, though. These were the first pieces of crap that initiated all of this fake stuff to get away from the Moorish Renaissance that was happening in the rest of the world. So these dudes alley -oop it to these dudes. So by the time it get to Marsh and Colt, these idiots take the um, fake information. Remember, this is all fake. <laughs> and it took all of this from Owen, who was imbued with the grant from the British society that was using the, the chickens that they was using to create the fossil bones with as a leftover commodity to, to make money off of the loss of being able to sell the chickens after they took the dope out of them. So all of this crap goes down. These two niggas decide, well, we need that grant money too. They start getting into the game and then they start warring with each other where they start creating their own sketches. Cope start making his own sketches. Well, I don't think that the tail will go in the head. I think this is where the head would be. 
Cope is like, you're an idiot. Marsh is like, no, I'm not. You're the idiot because anybody would see if there was a real spot. Remember, none of this is real. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell you. None of this is real. Keep that in mind. None of this is real. But it is. This, this is what I'm, what I'm telling you now. This is the birth of paleontology. This is the birth of archaeology. What are you talking about? You know how many people are paying money? to universities to get degrees in paleontology? You don't even get it. You don't even get it. Look, dragons are realer than dinosaurs, bro. <laughs> dragons is real. Like, I believe in that shit. Not a damn dinosaur, though. You know why? Because they even proved it. You could go online. There's been books written about it that said that took an actual... That they took the actual like outline of a triceratops of a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, <clears throat> and basically put where the organs were supposed to be at, or like a brontosaurus. Do you know if that, if that was actually real, these things would not be able to move. They would not be. How can you exist with arms like sharper, smaller? Than the rest of your body. You can exist, you can do it, right, if you had to, but why would nature evolve something that is the apex? This is the head predator. So the head predator of the whole thing don't got no arms? <laughs> what the fuck? What are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. So it could run fast, but it <laughs> you try running with your arms next to your, <laughs> next to your belly. Next to your, your body without moving them to see how far you get. You mean to tell me this thing could reach up skip speeds of up to 268 miles per hour, 3,000 miles per hour with no arms to balance itself? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say. If dinosaurs are fake, so I'm all with the fantasy. I'm all with the mythology. I'm cool with it. Because it makes for great stories. Like, I'm trying to get the rights to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a great movie. Like, this would be great. Just for the fact that you can't get people to see it for what it is. You got to put it on Netflix. You got to. Unfortunately, that's what you got to do. You got to do it that way. That's the only way they'll get it. They're not going to see it any other way. Look at, look at the whole riots. Look at what happened just now with the George Floyd thing and all of that. All of that, right? Is George Floyd get money? Is George Floyd family getting any money every time they use the word George Floyd for whatever they're doing? No. No. But somebody's getting money off of that name, George Floyd. Somebody trademark copyright that, I bet. Because it probably don't exist. There probably is no George Floyd. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, the, the stories, it's all posturing. So you got to put it in a way that they get it in the form of the story. Like they've been showing us malls on TV forever. Big up to Mr. Tibbs. Your boy. He just passed. Right? But your boy, he been showing you. He was one of the first people. He's one of the first actual melanated men to play a real more on film. Bless you. Thank you. With white slaves. This nigga was whipping white people. Bless you. He was whipping white people in Morocco with fences and turbans on, putting them into slavery, making them, making them work at a time when they was allegedly hanging niggas in Mississippi like three a week. And married to a white woman. But all his side chicks was black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, these dudes ain't, they, they the worst. Yet, he did what he could. You know what I'm saying? Like, this was on um, Mark Curry's show. Somebody posted this the other day. You mean to tell me they don't know? 
or that, that episode of um I Hate Everybody Hates Chris where he went to Moroccan school. Remember that? So because dinosaurs Marsh and them, Cope and Marsh started this heavy situation, it started to span continents. Because now what had to happen was you had other governments. Because remember, these world governments are fake. They are not real. They they were set up after everything was in shambles and messed up. And we, for, for the most part, again, remember, Gilded Age, they... In the Gilded Age, think black people coma. That's when we was just gone. And so any so-called black people that was or black people that was in power and stuff started to use these whites as decoys as a means to maintain their fortunes. While at the at the at the um at the um destruction of their own people. So these two dudes basically started to get through the British Royal Society, carry on Owens' work, and then petition and fight each other to get different grants and recognitions from different museums for their findings. But remember, all of their findings are fake. None of the, their findings are real. None of the documents, the books that they wrote, they got commissioned artists. They would get artists that were like cartoonists and hire them to create fossils or create drawings of the fossils. Then they would go get the chicken bones and, <laughs> and what you call it, the buffalo bones, and then mash them together, wet them up, mash them together, create the paste, the paper mache or whatever, and then create the actual bone. Then they would try to get into the land. If they couldn't get into the land they owned, they would then try to um, purchase the land. Then once they purchased the land under a dummy company, they would bury the fossils in the land, into the ground. Then they would, it went, it got so bad to the point where they would created a dummy, um, because you know white people were stupid after the, the Wild West thing. So in the West, they didn't know what was going on. So you could just get money off of them. So they created like a Western trail tour. And all along the tour, they they dug up, they buried bones and stuff, but just a way where you could find them. And then the people would then find the bones, right? And then bring it back to the guy. And the guy who was being paid would be like, oh, that's a that's a triceratops, blah, blah, blah. They'd be like, oh, word, well, do you have any more information? Yeah, I just so happen to have this book that was published by the Marsh Company, such and such and such, $19. You see what I'm saying? And this became the hustle to the point that today they about to they about to come out with Jurassic World <laughs> Dominion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we're about to see it. And there are people, like I said, who believe that these things once walked the earth, that they existed. You understand? When they there was no talk of any dinosaur. Where did one of the dinosaurs at in the Bible? Where did where the dinosaurs at in the Emerald Tablets? Where the dinosaurs at in Mesopotamia? You mean to tell me these niggas had giants, but there was no dinosaurs? Come on, man. So guess what? If there was no dinosaurs, there damn sure was no damn slave ship. I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> you can't produce one of them naturally in nature either. So if dinosaurs is not real, if the, the slave ship ain't real, then guess what? <laughs> if the calendar ain't real, you see where I'm going? Look, it's to the point that the humans ain't real. How would you say that? Why would you say that? I said, well, look, let me show you some pictures from 1930. Okay, now y'all know that during the so-called um, Holocaust, right, they, they had places that they used to take the people. And these places was in Germany, right? Auschwitz, Dachau, Prakas, what was it? Uh, Praktov. Or whatever, right? I don't speak Ukrainian, so forgive the whatever. 
all these concentration camps in Germany, right? Right? Schindler's List. Think about all of the movies. You done seen. You done seen what? You done seen them all. You done seen Schindler's List. You done seen The Pianist. You done seen Yento. <laughs> right? You done, went through, <laughs> you done went through the gamut. Right? Right? Why ain't they talking to you about the crematoriums and the necropolis that they had in London? What'd that say? London necropolis government, private station, Westminster Bridge Road. I told you, Krupp's built the ovens, Rockefeller built the railroads, Getty and them provided the gas. Hugo Boss did the uniforms. Um, IBM did the um, computations, the computers, right? All these are major companies today. They all corporations today, right? Is anybody boycotting them? Because what this says is that they was bringing so-called people to be executed or exterminated all over Europe. Why are they only talking about Germany? Why Farben, yes. IG Farben, that's right. Volkswagen, they said that's the, the joint that Hitler created himself. He self. Which is a great car. <laughs> it's a great car. For the most part. Right? Think about it. What would the, one of the greatest things that America was building was cars, and right after World War II and all of that, what was the first thing they did? They shut down the automotive industry. Why? Because the automotive industry, what you don't know, is tied into the Department of Defense, and that every automotive industry in the country that was set up had requisition orders that, God forbid, an emergency was established, they could convert their factories to weapon-making factories within 24 hours. Look it up. So destroying the American muscle car industry. America's made the best cars in the world. In the whole world. You understand? To now what? Made it where everything farming was better. Starting with what? The Mercedes Benz. The BMW. Right? Who made that shit hot? Negroes. See? See? Then from the Benz, then who got into the game? The, the Japanese, right? How many people remember the era in Brooklyn who grew up in Brooklyn, the era of the Maximus? <laughs> When all of the dreads had Maximus, tricked out Maximus. That was like the era where all of the Italians had IROC Zs. Like these was eras. You know what I'm saying? That was like the era where everybody had Suzuki sidekicks, where they where everybody was flipping over in them shits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, we went within one generation. To have these great GTO. What's better than a Pontiac GTO? What's what's better than a than a um Dodge Charger? Than a Mustang fully tricked out detail? Are you crazy? A Trans Am? Are you crazy? You crazy? A Dodge Charger with a Hemi? <sighs> Nigga, put that next to a Porsche any day. A, a what you call it any day. A Pontiac, yes, a vet. Put a vet next to a Ferrari, tricked out with it any day. See what happened. But they, all of the engineers, all of that left. Oh, it's finished. You know what I'm saying? Shut the whole thing down, fam. Also, that way they could stop the preparedness for Americans in the factory system. You see? So while you thinking they just, oh, they just all about foreign cars now. No, that serves a purpose. Who the number one people flossing cars right now?
Exactly. The new rich rappers who they replaced two a week. So here go the necropolis. So see, the necropolis cemetery station. They had trains going in and out 24 hours a day. Do you understand the people that was working at Auschwitz had health insurance? These niggas had dental benefits. <laughs> Marching people to the ovens. Like, for real, son. Like, really think about it. We, we think about it from the abstract. But we got to start to do the knowledge to it from the, from the root. Like, this was a business that these people was running. Think about it. All of the Auschwitz dudes, a lot of those people looked the same. Look. They trying to get into it to it happening. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I wouldn't get into that. I'm saying the cause of it, who was doing it and all of that is what's split with that. But when you look at a lot of these pictures, a lot of these people look the same, almost like they was cloned, like they was coming out the same place, especially when they were shaving them down and all of that. You know what I'm saying? You understand? And then remember, all of this happened, and right when all of this was coming down, right before World War One, World War Two, and all of that. You get these world exposition fairs where they allegedly built all of these elaborate structures out of paper mache and crayons and, and wax and shit. <laughs> right? And then threw all of those, put all of those into position and then made everybody feel like they was in. Like, okay, you've seen it. This is what it is. Now knock it down. Then knock down everything. Right? And then we're supposed to believe that this is a natural occurrence. How many people knew that the Vatican was, was set up under Mussolini? Mussolini established what you call the Vatican. He was the one that signed the treaty that allowed them to function independently as an independent state. Isn't that interesting? And then right after that, they did that. So you mean to tell me these people, you mean to tell me now, now again, I'm not going into people's religion or whatever, whatever. I'm talking to this from the perspective of the fake history. You mean to tell me that these people right here created a system by which they, right, could control us today, right, when almost what, 40, 50, 80 years, whatever you want to say from it, they themselves was basically wiped out. Then at the same time, within six years of the kibbutzes and all of the stuff they was doing by 1967, they was armed enough to then go in and take over the entire nation to now establish a Nazi regime system over them to create a Nazi-like system that they are now pe perpetrating over everybody else. So, like I said, anybody saying anything when it comes, like when people start talking about, oh, that's when the dinosaurs live, like, you got to understand. <laughs> you got to put them on. Like, yo, stop saying that in regular society is people going to think you crazy. They don't exist. They never existed. No dinosaur has ever been found. So when they tell you then that they found these dinosaurs and they can remake them like they do in Jurassic Park, remember, that's all cat. If you do see something like that, it's probably a damn robot. Just like the ones that they use in the movie. But you think they just use that just for movie? Like, if it pop off, what you think they're going to be using?
So again, this movement of so-called Caucasian so taking over the world and all of that, this was part of the orchestration. I think that was part of the market employ of the new so-called century. Because everything was set up to create a perpetual bondage over the people. Based on, like, if you read books like The Creature from Jekyll Island and stuff like that, what that basically says is that everything that we're participating in is false and fake. And all of these governments is with it. Like, how can people talk about Agenda 21 and still support governments that support that? Why? Because they mass produce people. These are the things that they were also doing in the in, in the um exposition. They were churning out people. You understand? See the symbol for the penis? See the penis and the two balls? The shaft? It's also like a rolling pin. Like they rolling them out. Where you think all the orphan children was coming from? They were incubating them. See, when we was little kids, they was calling clones and people who were messed with with IVF and stuff like that. They used to call them test tube babies. Remember? When the last time you heard that term? Remember, they just stopped using that term. Test tube baby. Yes. What you think a test tube baby is, man? Goddamn clone. It's a humanoid. It's something that has been mixed, tampered with artificially. Why was there such a boom of serial killers between the late 1950s with the hype being in the 70s with Son of Sam and all of that? Hmm? Think about it. Because these children were the children of these people who was brought over here with the paperclip stuff, who were already in tune with the mind control situations that had been going on because the government was now under the control of the establishment of the so-called banking establishment that was now using it to do its thing. Because these were the same billionaires that were written about buying America during the 80s, and all. I mean, you know, that time. Think about it. Trains. Thousands of white of so-called melanated children. Excuse me. Non-melanated children popping up all over the world to the point where they were working them in mines. Where laws had to be instituted and in not enslaving them. Buying them. And they were all put on trains and shipped throughout the entire country in places that were in dispute, in places that were being homesteaded by other by, by their precursors who had descended from the ones who had fought in the wars to take the land, give it to the state, and then they could stay on it as renters. This is where you get white people saying, oh, my ancestors been on this land since the early 1800s, because that's when the lots were given when fake European white people, slaves, was being given land by the robber, the land barons who were being represented by the robber barons. The robber barons were the white decoys working for the black ones <clears throat> who had now basically chosen to side with their Roman ancestry due to the fact that they could trace themselves to the European aristocracy. You see? So again, if dinosaurs don't exist, that means asteroids don't exist. Because whenever you talk about dinosaurs, remember I told you they had to come up with, where did they go? What happened? Okay, look, a giant rock 
came from the heavens and slammed down and then wiped them out. And then the earth was hot for mad long. And then eventually it cooled. And then that's when um uh that's when the big brown shark came. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was Washington, D. This was Washington <clears throat> at the time I'm talking about. It was literally a swamp. This was the only building that was left. <clears throat> because during the Great Calamity and the war, it was flown, it was uh, done over. So when he said it was about draining the swamp, he's talking about bringing it back to its original state when it didn't exist, when there was nothing there other than the one beacon that was left to rise out of the muck, which was the top. Because right, what you're looking at is the very top of the, the pyramid, the step pyramid. You know what I'm saying? So this, so again, us having to be from somewhere else was was a paramount. That's important because that is what allows them to maintain the jurisdictional powers that they are doing because they're working in concert with the other so-called blacks that descend from those that were a part of those societies that agreed to go along with this nonsense. The whole color thing come when you watch the slave movies, you always see the black slave brutalizing the black people on behalf of the white man. The white man ain't even forcing him to do it. He just doing it. And the white man is always propped up. You see, like he can do no wrong and he just talks shit about the black people that he's enslaving and all that. And then there's some blacks that's right there with him doing it. <clears throat> Because that's a customary thing, because uh, up until a couple of centuries, that's what they was doing to him. And so his family was groomed, his family was freed and accepted into this new society, you see, in which now he can be used and his position can be used to maintain everything. Yes, that's why it's a joke. That's why I showed you that thing about Freemasonry being um, black Freemasonry to this day being run by Albert Pike and your man Thornton Johnson, Thornton Jackson, who are the spiritual precursor and father to our uh, fathers to the mess that we in today. Again, using gibberish European dogma that didn't exist to teach you chivalry when we taught them that. But our people have fallen so low that they are at times the most base. So you can't do nothing with that. You know what I'm saying? So again, this is Washington. This is the swamp that this dude drunk was, was going in on that was dug out for these people to have a government. And look what they did with it. All because we ancient Mauritanians, i.e. ancient Moroccans, stranded in the empire with no political influence, are still at the beck and call of the rest of these niggas that have been posing as us. Everything is in the ground. They put everything under everything and then created 
like the whole era, like there's a like there was a whole era where they terrorized black bookstores. You understand? Where they was terrorizing black bookstores. I'm talking about the FBI and these people. Shutting them down wherever they could. That's why you don't see, see them like that no more. That's why those are the type of things we need to research because ultimately that's where we lost because they knew they was going to create a system where we would get all of our information through them. Think about that. That's why you got to go and get books as well because these niggas make up shit that's not real and they create documents, create um, degrees in it and then get people that look like you to go and parrot it like it's real. And if you don't go along with the degree that this nigga got and said, see what I'm saying? Something wrong with you. It's over. Like, look. Get this book, Lost Pillars of Enoch. A good one. Before the Civil War, some psychiatrists diagnosed slaves with what they called drape tipanomia, a mental illness in which the slave possessed an irrational desire for freedom and a tendency to try to escape. So see, because they were seen as cruel, callous animals for doing stuff like this and eating black people at the picnics and all of that. They had to come up with justifications, scientific justifications as to why it was okay to do that to them. Why you had to run and slave them because you were actually, because actually going and getting your runaway slave was you actually caring for their mental health. Do you see what I'm saying, Morris? How you could be so smart that you be duped into being stupid. Where they convince themselves <clears throat> that that's real. Just like today, diversity today means a black woman being gay with anybody but a black man or a black man being gay or white people being able to now be black, gay, Indian, whatever else, but still being able to be white people on paper. That's what it means today. And everybody's okay with it. That's working with it. But it's not okay. Because there's a deeper world in there. And an older world in there. Look. This was Jack Johnson boxing a robot. In, in the early, uh, late 1800s. You know what I'm saying? I believe 1853. So, and this robot, this model robot was created by a company out of Britain. We call him Mr. Bobby. He was like a butler style android that they was peddling back then. This again was during the Gilded Age when we were starting to go to sleep and they were taking control of all of these sciences. And they broke up Grand Tartar. So I think Napoleon, as an original man, existed, but the mythic Napoleon, the white one that we see on that, that he may not have existed. I'm thinking that a lot of these European people that they've given us as existed didn't exist either. So the, what we think the War of 1812, which was co coincidentally the same time that Russia and France went to war against Tartary, that all was a part of the same cataclysm. So the War of 1812 that happened in America was synonymous with the War of 1812 that was happening with Russia, France, and Tartary, which was also over here. So if these niggas have androids in the 1800s, that stuff that we read about in Jules Verne and all of that stuff with Captain Nemo and all that, all that stuff was real. But remember, the literature that they were creating, they were creating for the society that was segregated from the rest of the world. And once those societies were put under the colonial expansion through the British, they then would be accepted into the false timeline 
right? And they would then accept the false history and it would be placed upon them through <clears throat> the ritual of education. And so the stories like this, we'll hear about Jack Johnson having sex with all the white women and doing that, but we won't hear about him being the improver of the monkey wrench or the um, fact he used to box robots and knock them out. <laughs> that he used to fight humans and robots. That's a movie, that's a story within itself. That's why I'm writing in there. You'd probably be good as Napoleon. But we know Napoleon and Toussaint and Dumont were all black. Like if Dumont was black and Prince Marat was black and Marie Antoinette was black, then how is he the only white? How is he white? Like they white when it means status. You know what I'm saying? You gotta look at it like that. So yes, Jack Johnson used to fight robots. Dinosaurs are not real, have never been real, will never be real. Therefore, asteroids will never be real, can never be real. The only way they could do that is, again, by pulling an Ultron in what they did to Sokovia. Remember when Ultron tried to raise the whole raise the whole thing out the ground? Remember he did that? And then drop it? Dropped it like it's hot? Like, maybe if you do that, that's the only way. But by the same token, nuclear energy, nuclear power may not be real either. That shit may not be real, because I figure if these niggas would have had a nuke and they dropped it on Japan, it seemed like it was something with the bleach, because it seemed like everybody that was in Japan prior to the dropping of Nagasaki, Naga, meaning more, uh, and he Hiroshima, Heiru, right? <laughs> Shima, Ma, meaning more. Um, they was all mad dark. And then after that, they all, you know, became very, very light skinned. And then a lot of the stuff started to change. And they started to basically hide dialects. Like me and the queen was just watching this thing with this dude, white dude, the black dude that speak like Chinese and Cantonese and stuff like that. He go into the different restaurants, speaking to them Chinese people, bugging them out. And one of the dialects he speak is Fuhanese, right? Because the Fuhan was more, um, they said it was the fighting language. So they would stop speaking it. Because this was the language that the old ones, the old Moors that was over there was speaking. And it was seen as more aggressive because that's how they was portraying them as they were starting to wipe them out during this era. That they were too aggressive, that the way they spoke was too this or that. See what I'm saying? So it's a wrap. So yeah, so they was doing all of that. And while this was happening, they was basically supplanting us in our own places by producing these these children, freeing all of these slaves, importing them over here. And then, um, you know, those of us that was down with that selling us out. But see, sellouts can be traders, but traders can't really be sellouts. You know what I mean by that? Exactly. So you mean to tell me this nigga was fighting a metal machine with his bare hands, barely wrapped up with tape, and he was knocking the robots out too? They said, oh, we got to do something to stop this thing. He, he, he making, and he having sex with all the white women. He's the one they created the man act that they wind up getting R. Kelly for. He the one they initiated it for. Who and who pardoned him? Who pardoned him out of everybody? Drunk. Right? Drunk. Pardon him. Got little Wayne out of jail. And y'all niggas gonna say this nigga's racist? That's why, that's why these niggas deserve every every grave they get. Cause by their own mouth they curse themselves. So yes, the human incubators was popping. They was not playing. 
these bone war dinosaur niggas was a go. Here they go. And they was and they had us they this thing that I'm showing you here with the human incubator, that was set up at one of the world expositions. So they had human incubators at the world exposition that you could go to and just pick white babies up. <laughs> now remember, this is after all of the bodies. This is the, right before the mass destruction that was going to happen at the ne necropolis, wherever they established necropolis is at over the planet, where they was basically sending everybody they was killing. And all of this was being run via Freemason. See what I'm saying? Freemasonry is the tie that binds all of this together because that's how they was able to keep their secrets and keep their thing going. The promise of power, whether it be satanic, magic, whatever. These things was about it. How do we know that? Well, we can look at some of the slave shackles to see that this has always been a war against the true enemy, who are the so-called light bearers, because they believe that they are here to protect us. As I said, Hydra was founded on the premise that humanity could not be, Hydra was founded on the premise that humanity could not be uh, left to control its own freedom. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what's up, Pete. So, obviously, robots are real. Artificial intelligence has been real for a long time, obviously. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> everything else they talking is crazy. So, again, if there's no dinosaurs, there's no asteroids. If there's no asteroids and no dinosaurs, that means that there's no space. That means there's no transatlantic slave trade. That means these things did not happen. They did not happen that way. And that's it. So you got to understand there are people who are still paying thousands of dollars back in archaeological degrees. There are people, you know what they do? They say, yo, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go in order to graduate. In your paleontology thesis, you got to basically create your own dinosaur. Basically, you got to create your own dinosaur, create the, they give you the plaster to create the dinosaur with, and then you got to give your disposition as to the dinosaur or, you know, where it is, where it was found, where it would have lived, and all of that, because it's all speculative nonsense. But the British Royal Society get money, these niggas get money every year or for perpetuating the lie. So if they created a whole science to lie with that, why wouldn't they be doing that with everything else? That's all I'm saying. They lying about everything. Like I had this discussion, I told you a little while ago um, with this person, we were talking about angels and we were getting into, you know, what it is and, uh, when a person dies, you know, they could become an angel and all that. I said, why would you want to make yourself, why would you think so low of yourself? And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, because remember, Allah created the angel to serve us because they were the so-called pinnacle energy in whatever dimension that they was in. But whatever they was doing, obviously it wasn't enough because he found favor with us over them. Remember? Yes, so we're talking about angels, angles of light. Exactly. So if that's the case, then we as human beings, why would Allah create us as human beings and then what? We die and then curse us to then be something that he said was lower? Unless that's a hell. <laughs> but why would he do that? Why would he do that? It don't make sense. Also, angels are not how they appear in the movie. In the Bible, their Bible, it says the angel, right? was so beautiful that Lucifer was the most beautiful of all the angels. But do you know why? You know why? Because it said that he had 365 eyes and the other ones only had like eyes in the 200s and shit. 
This is why every time you've seen, so think about this. So when you see the TV show and they talk about the angels with the wings, that again is the fictitious aspect. Because remember, our ancestors was communicating with these higher dimensions and these higher realities. And we had a tertiary effect on them by being able to commune with them so long as we were in our pristine state, right? So we created devices and things like that based on them because we remember we were given dominion. Allah didn't say take this planet in peace. He said dominate, right? Allah said take the whole thing. He didn't say share it. He said you have been given dominion over all of this. And so these niggas, i.e. the angels, they just here to tell you what I need you to know. But you not under them. Matter of fact, those that rebel is going to be under, even under you. According to the story, right? Remember, we talking about the story. So these angels that we be reading about and these things or whatever, that's why every time they come to you or they we see them in the Bible or they're spoke of in some sort of thing, what do they say? First thing they say. Be not afraid. Why would they need to say that if they look like regular people? Because they don't even have a physical form like that. The angel was to pop. Imagine one of these things pop out on you right now. To give you good news, you still be like, yo. Think about that. That's how you know that these pastors and these people talking about how the angels spoke to them and told them they ain't they lying. They're lying. They never see no real angels. <laughs> you can't, because we can only perceive them from this type of reality. We can only perceive them like this. That because they at a different frequency, but as ill and whatever as this is, it's still not better than you, according to the story. According to the story, we still more powerful than this. And you know it's true because we created things to be able to circumnavigate reality based on their design that we Moors created. Remember these? We created these. From the flat plane with the world within the world within the world within the world is why they used to call the angels the wheels within the wheels and name and every angel name and with an L right so in essence they named after us due to knowledge to that we all named after our law the angels is named after us. So Michael ain't an angel name. Michael is a human name adopted by the angels. And you and, and these people wanted you want to be one of these things? When Allah made you the arm, leg, leg, arm, head, the perfect archetype of it in a female version and a male version. That's why they want the, the people to be trans and androgynous and stuff because that puts them under the direct jurisdiction of these things that are not definite that exist through influence and messaging the arm leg leg arm head is definitive it is divine it is eternal it is inevitable that's what thanos and dark side and galactus and and the eternals that's what these things represent things you just cannot get around and it's true. Look what happened to the Marvel thing. It's all whack now. Thanos steadied it. <laughs> and now Kang about to flip it. Who's another black man who had an inter interdimensional black business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because this is the future. We're getting to the inevitable singularity where these angels manifest and open it up to the Holy of Holies and reveal that it's always been us. 
but we trying to be an angel because we see movies like City of Angels with Nick Cage and shit. You think angels is a bunch of white people, stoic white people walking around in libraries, stamping over people's shoulders and shit. Like, no, that's those are demons. The only difference between this being a demon or an angel is you. <laughs> you determine that message it will give you. It ain't the other way around. These things don't have no control over their own life. Allah made it that way. We're the only, we're the freest things in the universe. We so free, we enslaved. <laughs> you dig? We are so free that we're enslaved. <laughs> so don't wish to be something lower than your station. Strive to be higher than the station to exist in the realm so we don't get sucked back down into the quagmire with the rest of these reprobates who believe things like dinosaurs and and <laughs> you know what I mean and that you could build an elaborate paper mache building that you could walk into and destroy it made out of plaster and eggshells and shit. You could just destroy it in a month. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, white man, if that's what you believe. Okay. So again, man, what I think everybody should do, if you need to, get a map of the square and stationary earth. It's a good map to have, to go through. Because as it stands, there's only two ways to get when they do take people to Antarctica and stuff. They really taking them from the Shetland Islands. I think that's over here. Basically, what they're doing is they're telling people this is Antarctica, right? But this is Antarctica. Think about it. Antarctica. Ant means what? Ant, well, can mean small. But it can also mean against. So it means anti-Arctic. Think about it. Anti-Arctic. So this is anti, excuse me, Antarctic. This whole ice wall around it. And there's only two ways to get it. So when they take people, they take them here. Or they take them here. And they fly them here. And then back. Because every so often there's a shift and you can get into it at four corners. Understand? And those four corners represent the four main rivers of Zion, of, of eternity, excuse me, of uh, thing that flow down from the pole. Y'all seen that map I showed you before. Right? But it also represents So when you see the four corners and the split um, They said it's the map, it's the river, the four rivers that run from the main pole, main pole and it's split into three, and it's split into four. Well, that symbol for that split in the four corners is the symbol of the moors. See? That's why this is like this, because it represents the four gates. River. Another name for, for river is gate. Yeah. So you get to a, a map of square stationary earth and then do the knowledge to it because this again is how it was prior to them switching everything up in the 50s, in 950 AD, which they would say is 915, uh, 1950. 
it's a good one to have. And again, I'm not into the flat earth situation. Like, I'm not into it like that. But in understanding that earth itself is around, that is more accurate than the maps that they show on us the thing is today. And anything that they outlawed in terms of information is the shit we need to be doing in Austin. So again, um, angels uh, are not real the way that they depicted that. Get the book on the bone wars. Research more on that. So that way you can get more familiar how to shut these people down and then go by the hypothesis method. Because again, if you go by the line of descent, if dinosaurs is under the asteroids and the asteroids is under space and space is under this, then that means that if the dinosaurs is fake, everything going above that is fake. You heard? That's just what it is. And if the dinosaurs is fake and that's fake, then that means space is fake, then that means NASA's fake, that means transatlantic slave trade fake, that means it's all fake. That's it. How, how is it that Pluto was no longer a planet, but now that we're going into the return of Pluto, look up, that's another thing too, look up the return of Pluto, how to handle that, how to deal with that. Uh, now that Pluto back, um, return of Pluto coming, they got to do it. Last time return of Pluto came, Rome fell. So I'll leave with this. New Year's Day, first day of January, fake. The 25th of March was the civil and legal New Year's Day to the alteration to the style in 1752. See? See? When it was permanently fixed at the 1st of January. In Scotland, the year was by proclamation, which bears the 27th of November, 1599. This was right after the intercessions. Ordered thenceforth to commence that the kingdom on the 1st of January instead of the 25th of March. So that means what? Everybody that celebrate New Year's are in the British Kingdom, right? Which is why I, like other Moors, celebrate New Year, excuse me, True Year in March. See? Then we as intergalactic Moors celebrate the serious New Year, the real serious New Year when? September 9th, excuse me, September 11th. So September 11th is a serious new year. In the serious new year, it's the year 15, excuse me, 5021. In the Asiatic calendar, it's the year 15,062. In the Moorish calendar, it's the year 1442 well, 14, or yeah, 1442. And in the old Morris County, it's 1021. So, again, Morris, we're going to be on our own situation. We need our own language and we got to be under our own time. And we got to stop slaving ourselves and having agreements and arguments. This is why you don't never see me debate no more. Because these niggas will talk all of this science stuff and all of that, and then they'll bring in shit like dinosaurs and, 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 <laughs> and asteroids and space and all of that. And I'm not going to just go into how none of that's real to me. As soon as you start talking to me about space and, and all of this other stuff, I'm just not, I'm checked out. Because if you believe in space the way that they say in space exists, and then you're using that to then say that our ancestors came from there, then you ain't no better than the rest of them. You under the same spell. Because again, space seems fake to me. And there's no one that can prove that it's real. What was real though? Woolly mammoths and stuff like that. Is this a real woolly mammoth right here? I don't think so. I don't know. Here's the toenails. You know what I'm saying? Because remember, their science is based on faith, because this falls under what? Paleontology or archaeology, right? Which means what? It's fake. Because things like the shit, the stuff that they show us is not real. So again, if Egypt, let's close it out, right? Okay. We're right. Uh, 
right? Lastly, this one. Yeah, so when you see that they are going to revive and create a, because there was a whole rumor that in the Central Af African Republic, they had like a whole Jurassic type situation out there, which again, like I said, if they do create something like that, they got a big thing on it. Because anatomically, most of that stuff cannot exist. If they was actually walking around like that, their organs would just, <laughs> would fall out of their bodies. Put it like that. So again, just to put a pen in it, Egypt as a conceptual understanding place, according to how they give it to us or whatever, is fake. It's fake. Yes, there are remnants of reality and stuff in it, I agree, but not all of the buildings that are there were originally there. And a lot of the stuff that was originally there, they took from over here and vice versa. So we'll never really know because what we do know is coming from liars. Number two, dinosaurs are fake. So because dinosaurs are fake and were invented by a madman, which then created a whole industry dedicated to lying. To this day, where now they have made movies and convinced generations of people that things like this could actually exist, while the real things that do exist are then taught to be the opposite means then that all that's fake. Same thing with angels. Holy Ghost person tells you that the angel appeared to them or the angel came to them in a dream and they look like Robert Redford or whoever, whatever. That's all cat. They could probably take physical forms like that, but that's still, it's still got to be based on what you perceive it as. But if it comes to you in its original form, it's not going to be pretty. And you're not going to want to talk to it. That's why our ancestors created ways to deal with this type of stuff and integrate this knowledge by actually creating devices based upon their actual physiology that allowed us to look within space time, which in essence is them, how they were created and use that not only to take dominion of the planet, but to take dominion of them to the point that they adopt our name. That's all the armillary is. That's all this thing is. That's This is basically like a ship's mass. This is what it is. Because we based it on this. So where do we get the design for the armillary from? We got it from the physical interactions with these hyperdimensional beings that we had jurisdiction over. That's why I said that we had jurisdiction. We had dominion over the higher self. Because time never was when man was not. If there ever was a time when time began and surely would be a time that it would end. Nah, you can't talk to no, no layman like this. This is the science that mainly P. Hall and these niggas been hiding from everybody. Because like I said, this, this is just dinosaurism. So again, this is fact. So again, there's no way that you can take their word for anything if the very basis of their historical, because again, the Royal Society was funded by, is funds who? The Smithsonian. And both of them are in league with the Gamay. That's why all of these museums have everybody's culture in it, but they ain't giving it back. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Exactly. So the, on the real angels are the Moors. Are the ills by which the, the non physical entities, the ethers, are based on and are in servitude of Islam. So let's not be lower, let's be high, let's be on the level of God the Father and sit on the right hand side because that's our position. We are the, the, the lords of the long ships, we the ones that put this society back in order when. The last epoch of time, shut it all down, messed it up. You know what I'm saying? That's why they're scared to make real movies with us. That's why they don't want to have no real Black Panther be a man. They don't want that. Because this whole agenda has been about destroying women by getting rid of men. Understand? 
Look at how black men, so-called black men and so-called black women talk now. They sound like everybody else. They all sound the same. Either they extra ghetto or they extra, what you call it, or they in between, like us. And in that, we are then seen as being an anomaly amongst our own people because we not want it like that. We want it like this. Like this nigga right here. Understand this thing had Kirk Douglas as a slave in a movie. What's more gangster than that? <laughs> Nothing. So, long live the empire, man. Know that the Moors, who are the ancient Mauritanians, are the true possessors of the world, and that all of these ancient structures was built by people that look like us, the ancient giant Mauritanians, descended from the Moabites, Canaanites, Phoenicians, and everybody else. Everybody hating is the same one's weight. You know what I mean? So, everybody, if you can uh, go to www.icedajikatiers.com, check out some of the older stuff I have up there. Gumroad.com. Uh, Type in I say the Duke Tears in the chat. Uh, you can check out www.cordobaorganics.com. Please check that out. And uh, I'm going to be having a thing soon for the Dark Scope 418 the preliminary joint for that. The, the information and the artwork and stuff is looking real good. The website is looking crazy. So, we're going to be ready to go with that real soon, man. So, inshallah, hit me up on that, on anybody's individual process. And um, if anything else, you know, be safe and sound and take into account the things that I've been talking about, man. Go get these books. Research the bone wars. So when these niggas start talking to you about that and then use the dinosaur conversation to ixnate everything out of their mouth. Because if they talking about that, any of that is real, you already know anything else they talking about is coming out tainted and fake, too. They have no leg to stand on. And none of your ancestors talked about no goddamn dinosaurs. What they did talk about was dragons, though, <laughs> and other mythical creatures. Next week, inshallah. All right? Peace.